the young Barney Casey thought he might have a vocation. But poverty meant he had to go to work to support his family. He took jobs as a lumberjack, a hospital orderly, a prison guard, and a tram operator. One day, he came across a crowd surrounding a knifed dead woman with her assailant standing over her. Spending the night praying for them both, he wondered how he could fight evil. Eventually, he joined the Capuchin Franciscans. They gave him the religious name Solanus after a 17th century Spanish Franciscan missionary in Peru with whom Barney shared a love not just of things Franciscan but also of the violin. They gave him a priestly formation and had him ordained but because he was regarded as poorly educated and intellectually limited he was not allowed to preach or hear confessions. Instead, he was appointed doorkeeper in a series of Capuchin friaries in New York, Yonkers, Penn, Penn Station and Harlem, and later at their monastery in Detroit. As porter or receptionist, he was the one who people first encountered at the door of the friary. Encountered by visitors, beggars, or people in spiritual need. Through his simple faith, he mediated God's mercy and healing grace to people in need. And many attributed miracles to his intercession or enlightenment to his wise advice. A story is told, for example, of one of his visitors to the door of the friary who'd come needing emergency dental work. Father Solanus blessed him. And to the astonishment of both the dentist and the patient, the tooth was immediately cured and found to be perfectly healthy. Father Solanus suggested that they celebrate this great thing and so pulled out some ice cream which he kept somehow miraculously frozen for the occasion, not in a cooler but in a warm drawer. God's miracles and our participation in them can be on a dramatic, even cosmic scale, but they can also be the smallest little mercies which he showers on us much more frequently. This morning, the Archdiocese of Sydney solemnly commences our celebration of the Jubilee of Mercy, proclaimed by Pope Francis to mark the 50th anniversary of the close of the Second Vatican Council. The Holy Father desires that throughout this year we contemplate the person of Jesus Christ, who is the face of the Father's mercy. We plan many local celebrations of God's mercy through broader opening hours of churches and banners inviting people in greater availability and encouragement of Eucharistic adoration and confession, many parish missions and deanery-based second rites of reconciliation celebrated by the Archbishop with teams of priests. There will be opportunities for catechesis and formation in mercy at particular points during the liturgical year. Through resources for preaching, parish activities, schools and families, through a dedicated website and through focus on the sacraments of mercy, reconciliation and anointing of the sick. There will also be a greater emphasis on the spiritual and corporal works of mercy, 
including our archdiocesan project of welcoming Syrian and Iraqi refugees. With pilgrimages through the Door of Mercy here at the Cathedral, and with First Friday prayers and fasting for various groups in particular need of mercy. But all this began today for our diocese and just recently for the Universal Church through the opening of a door, a rather exotic Catholic tradition dating back at least to the 15th century. Pilgrims cross the threshold of the Holy Door and receive from the Church's treasury of graces a plenary indulgence or remission of any punishment still due to confessed and forgiven sins. Any purification we might still need even after making a good confession. All the Church asks is that as well as making our way through that door, we make a good confession within a reasonable time, receive Holy Communion and pray for the Holy Father's intentions. But why the door bit? Because as St John Paul II taught walking through a holy door himself, to walk through a holy door is to evoke the passage of every believer from death to life, from sin to grace, and recalls that Jesus called himself the gate of the sheepfold. Those who enter by him are saved and can shelter in his embrace. Today, clergy, religious and laity of Sydney process through the Holy Door into our cathedral, inaugurating our jubilee. We have symbolically entered together through Christ to receive his grace and mercy. Pope Francis picked this Sunday, Gaudate or Rejoicing or Rose Sunday, so that whatever our trials in life, we might delight in the certain knowledge that Christ has come and is coming and will come again. So it was that St Paul, who knew every kind of natural and human persecution, could counsel us to be happy, always be happy in the Lord. For as Zephaniah prophesied and St John the Baptist confirmed, someone is coming who can reconcile us to God and to each other, who can repeal our sentence, relieve us of every punishment we are due. Through the coming of Christ, mercy is the justice of God's kingdom. Aware of our weakness, our temptations, our vices, God stoops down in his generosity to remove our misery by cancelling our sin and all its effects. Of course, no one asks for mercy who doesn't believe they need it. If you think you are perfect and self-sufficient, you will not reach out for help. And if you don't experience any neediness yourself, you are unlikely to sympathise much with those who do. Our Jubilee Year of Mercy begins with the sheer contrast between the perfect and all-powerful God who dwells in unapproachable light and our own powerlessness, our inability to pull ourselves up by our shoelaces and conquer the all too obvious darkness of our weaknesses and guilt. 
every human being who is humble of heart and honest in self-examination will know they need help. Enter, Pope Francis calls us, enter the door of God's great mercy. Let him liberate you from the sins, vices, addictions, from the unforgivingness, vengefulness, gossipiness, from the vanity, dishonesty, lies. Open the doors not just of your cathedral, but of the church that is your body, your soul. Open your hearts to God's mercy, humbly seeking and receiving forgiveness and healing. But it doesn't finish there. With our receiving and appreciating mercy, Pope Francis has made the motto of this year of mercy, Christ's words to us, be merciful as your heavenly Father is merciful. Having experienced divine pity, we must mediate it to others. We must not only celebrate it, reflect upon it, but also live mercy in spiritual and corporal works of mercy. Spiritual works of mercy are acts of compassion by which we help our neighbours with their emotional and spiritual needs, such as advising, instructing, admonishing, comforting, forgiving, forbearing, or interceding for them. Corporal works of mercy are kind acts by which we help our neighbours with their material and physical needs, such as feeding, clothing, sheltering, welcoming, visiting, or burying them. Like Jesus, the gate and gatekeeper. Like Father Solanus, who kept the door of the friaries. We are doorkeepers, custodians of God's door, and we welcome people through that door, through our volunteering and charitable giving, our CCD catechetics in state schools, our visiting the lonely in nursing homes, our offering our holiday house or some time or money to our refugees now arriving from Syria and Iraq, and so on. To truly appreciate mercy received is to be driven to share mercy with others. May you experience God showering down upon you his big and little mercies in this year ahead and be inspired in turn to share that with others. Amen.